frustrated because even by myself, I'm self-conscious and uh, because I've talked about it so much and have done it for years and I have coping mechanisms, I think that I should have had this down pat and it's a chemical imbalance and even with medication, I am I am not going to have this down pat and I'm just not. It's... Uh, it's a job and the pay sucks but I have a lot of friends that love me and I'm very fortunate that way and I'm very sorry that 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 I can't can't meet them I wanted to to Ask somebody to go out, out out for tea with me, and 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 the, the this is what happens. I'm sorry. I really want it. To tell something funny. <laughs> but it's hard because I can't see your faces. And I can talk to you a camera because it's impersonal. But I feel really bad and I'm trying not to take it personally <laughs> because it's just what it is. It's part of being bipolar. And if I wasn't on medication, this would be really bad or maybe I wouldn't even be here. Because this isn't even a deep depression. And uh, I can't believe I used to drink and take medication too. It was bad. It was bad. I would get violent and I would throw vases at my husband. I would say terrible things. I had the delusion that it was everybody else's fault instead of mine. And now I'm afraid of delusions. I really am. When I can't tell, oh, that's my clock. But when I can't really tell, I'm very cautious now because I had an incident where I said terrible things to some family members and friends. And I don't feel okay about being around people. And I think the best amends I could make is to leave them alone. And I, I being brave on Facebook, that's as good as I can get. Yeah, I'm scared of myself all the time. When I'm hateful, I can talk with the double-edged sword. And um, when I think I'm going down a hill, I tell my family and friends to text my husband instead of me until I feel like I'm safe enough to send messages because I can send messages and think I'm totally right and that I'm being reasonable and then I can read them the next day and I'm like, oh my God, I cannot believe you said that. There's no way you can undo that. So anyway, 
that's prob probably why I, 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 I st st stutter face to face because I'm always uh, afraid of hurting people. Words hurt, hurt as much as f f f physical actions. And um, so this is the, the bravest I get being on, in, impromptu on Facebook and YouTube. This, this is me be, be, being brave. Because I'm always afraid I'm going to say st st something really hateful or inappropriate. And um, I don't, I don't want to do that. So, so if you go through time, times like that too, too, I, I know how, how that feels. And I, I know what it's like to insomnia and also fight, fight, sleep. And I, I also know what it's like to have what they call kick hypnagogic dreams that aren't like hearing voices because apparently because I don't, don't hear them during the day. And, uh, one other thing I never talk, talked about is that um, when I'm really go, going downhill in any kind of fan, like ceil ceiling fan or, or, you know, the box fans because I'm always having hot flashes, I, I hear radio stations that play stupid stuff. Stupid songs, like those songs that get stuck in your head. And I think my husband's playing a stereo downstairs, what we call stupid TV. You know, the really stupid stuff. But I think they're singing the stupid songs or giving stupid newscasts. And he isn't. And when I hear those, I know it's time for rest and fortunately my psychiatrist their um firm has an online site where I can message her and her nurse will read it and get in touch with her so we can tell if it's something we need to change in my medication and you know what recently when you see me cheery and when you see me like this, there is no medication change because after my breakdown, this is as good as it gets. The days y'all tell me that I'm very beautiful and I'm happy and just talk about lots of books, that's a manic. This is a depression. And this is the face of being bipolar. This is it. And the pretty one and the worn out, really old looking one, like now. They're both me. They're both me. But I love me. And I'm worth it. And so are you. So hang in there. I mean, my God, hang in there. I need you to hang in there as much as you need me to. So you, in a gentle way, stay strong. Okay? God, I wish we could go out for tea. <sighs> If I did, did didn't stutter and, and, and jerk so much, 
uh, I'd go out with you, or I, I, I'd have you over. But, but it gets wor worse than this in public. So, I, I'm so sorry. But it's okay. I've, I've been like this since I was in my teens, and people would say, I always wished you could have gotten help. I was getting help. My doctors were doing the best that they could, and it's taken me decades to learn about this and to try to be reasonably okay with being crazy. And that's been a hard fight to know you're crazy and to be okay with it. At least reasonably okay. Because <laughs> I'm not even feeling suicidal, but I'm really sad and afraid. But I'm hanging in there for you guys as much as for me. So, the sound on this probably won't match my face. I'm sorry about that. My husband.